in the middle of basically nowhere in Wales here. Lovely scenery, exciting driving. What we're trying to do is see whether this USB portable DNA sequencer actually can work with a bunch of, let's be honest, idiots like us halfway up a wet hillside. At Kew Gardens, one of the things we do that's most important is our mission to discover about the diversity of plants and fungi on the earth, the family tree of life, if you like. Normally, to work out you know, what species are present in any given area, you take the field guide. It's a big book full of lots of detailed descriptions and you go to your field site and you collect lots of them and you pour over the collections and you compare it to the detailed records. And if you're pretty skilled, you'll get the correct species most of the time, but it's not 100% accurate, it's very slow, and you have to be an expert to do it. What this week's about is about trying to do all of that complicated taxonomy, that identification of species. We're trying to see if we can do it with just DNA sequences, because DNA gives you an absolutely copper bottom ironclad guaranteed way to tell which species is which and even tell individuals apart within a species. Up until now the problem has been that DNA sequences are massive, they're about the size of a fridge, they have to stay in a lab which has to be carefully controlled, climate controlled, power controlled, all the rest of it. It's pretty inconvenient because what we want to do is come to places like this and actually read the DNA of things in situ and if we do that we can hopefully work a lot more quickly, find out more interesting things, work with species that can't be moved, perhaps moved out of country for one reason or another. What we've got here is a book full of small flowers that look virtually identical. But this is why, you know, this is why we're doing this because this is why DNA is such a great way because if you can just ping it in the sequencer and get the answer yeah. That's a hell of a lot quicker and more accurate. The Oxford Nanopore Min-Iron Sequencer. It's a tiny box about the size of an iPhone. It connects to a laptop with USB, not a supercomputer. Can we take this box outside and use it? Can we get DNA from a plant that we pick on the hillside here with a minimal set of facilities over here? Um, Alex has basically set a lab up under a tent with the same amount of kit, equipment and gubbins as you'd have in a, for a family barbecue. We've got no fridge, we've got no power, we're running a tiny generator over there. And where we've got no internet, you know, we've got no access, even, we haven't even got mobile phone signals down here in this valley. It's a really exciting weekend. It's a little bit stressful because there's been a few things that have uh, not quite panned out how we would like. Basically, we're definitely not in the lab anymore. <laughs> We've got a generator that keeps cutting out because we're overloading it. In fact, I think it might be about to die as we speak. We're having to do a bit of improvising along the way. That's okay. That's kind of the point of doing this. Alex has got the lab set up, quite merrily running his water bath and his centrifuge, and we're doing the extractions. Next step is going to be to actually turn the sequencer on, load the DNA in it, see if we get any DNA out of the sequencer, and then try and match that DNA against a reference database to basically try and work out whether we've sequenced rubbish or whether we've got the genome that we're hoping to see, which is a tiny little plant called Arabidopsis thaliana. If we can do this out here in the soaking rain in Wales, basically anyone can. Anybody anywhere can now use a min iron to sequence DNA.